This includes PR, employee engagements, engagement, branding, diversity and inclusion as well as lies in with the industry and government bodies. She has worked closely with the startup community via the Microsoft Ventures program and she has collaborated with several Microsoft stakeholders across the globe and has a strong network across technology industry and other businesses in India. To you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just to add to it, she has a very strong connection to the NDC to our dad owns NDC bonds. <laughs> yes. So um, when I heard, owned actually, he's passed, but uh, when I heard um, of NTPC and Elbert contacted me, I'm going to stand here if that's all right. Is that okay? okay. So uh, when Elbert got in touch with me, um, because of that emotional connection with NTPC, my father always said, uh, first of all, he was a big fan of NTPC, and he invested in NTPC, and he made me invest in NTPC and said, you know, this is, you know, government companies, public sector, you can never go wrong, solid, solid financial investments. So I think uh, Elbert struck a good conversation with me as a consequence of that. I didn't need to be convinced because I also appreciate all the work that um, NTPC does. So with that, I'll just start uh, and introduce myself. All the stuff that you heard is about my professional work. Uh, my background is I have an Australian Indian heritage. Uh, my father was Indian and my mother Australian. I've spent some of my childhood in Hyderabad um, and I grew up in Australia. And I came back to Hyderabad because I love living in India and, I and India drew me back. Um, obviously for personal reasons as well, my parents were here. And I've been working now with Microsoft for 11 years. Um, before that I was a journalist with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, so I was working in radio and some television, but primarily radio. So to coin an old journalism terminology, I crossed over to the dark side when I started my work with Microsoft. Um, but it's been a great journey, and I've learned a lot. And what I'm going to talk to you about today is stuff that you already probably know and probably do. And so I'm preaching to the converted, as I said before. Uh, but if there's some nuggets that you can take away from what I do and what we do as a communications team, I'd be very happy to share that. I'm not capturing all the work that we do. Naturally, that would take quite a longer session than this. Uh, so do feel free to reach out to me afterwards. I do have some cards which are in my backpack, and I, you can contact me separately. Um, and with that, I'll start my presentation, which is going to focus initially on culture, because culture in an organization is very important. And I think the biggest culture story for us at Microsoft in recent, it, it's been the biggest story for us internally is how we have shaped our culture and changed it over the last three years since our new CEO, Satya Nadella, started at the helm in 2014. So I'll talk about that a little bit, and then I'll go into some of the best practices that we're doing. So where were we coming from when we started? You know, we were a PC company. Our aim was PC on every desktop. Uh, technology was big focus. Uh, I'm not sure you, it's not rendering properly here, guys, so you might have to look at this this screen. And of course, we started with very impressive desktops. Um, those are the founders. And we had a passion then for learning and innovating. And of course, now as well, we have the same passion. It continues. Uh, much bigger company. We are growing and growing. And currently, it says 120,000. But actually, we've grown even more since this slide was created. So. Um, one of the challenges of having a large company, of course, is that you have cultural differences, you have lots of divisions, you have lots of organizations, lots of people in different parts of the world who need to all be uniformly kind of perhaps um, informed about what's happening at the organization and also come together as an organization, uh, you know, not, not having disparate um, mm, philosophies, if you like. So what did we do in our cultural journey once we started, we had, of course, we introduced a lot of technologies. These are just some of the technologies. I'm not covering all the stuff that we've done. But there was a key moment three years ago when we had our new CEO, as I mentioned, Satya Nadella joined. Satya started, he was the third CEO in 40 years. And when he joined at the helm, we were considered a successful technology company, but a bit stodgy, a bit boring, not sexy. And also, uh, again, same issue, cultural issues, you know, everyone was doing different things, there were different technologies being developed. I work here at the India Development Center. We do a lot of work, a lot of development that goes into the family group of products and services that we have. But 
Here in India, it's a different story to say what's happening in, say, Redmond, to what's happening in Russia, to what's happening in, in Israel, for example. So one of the first things Satyad really did was address the whole issue of culture and how he was very focused on this. How can we bring everyone together on how can we create a shift in culture in the company where we continue to learn, where we continue to um, grow as a company and we change perceptions within the employees about ourselves. And so, of course, a lot of work went into it. And the culture story from an employee comms perspective involved a lot of internal communications. I'll just give you a snapshot of some of that stuff. But uh, I just want to say that we did stuff externally to promote uh, awareness about how we're shifting our culture. But internally was where all the hard work happened and all the channels that were used to employ, to create interest, engagement with employees. So what did we do? We first started off with a changing our mission statement. And the mission statement, as you see now, uh, is a lot of work went into it. I mean, I thought it, it took like two months of, you know, there was email exchanges, there was conversations, there was signage about, please, you know, give your inputs on what you'd like our new mission statement. So the employee involvement was there. But of course, eventually, there was a leadership cabinet that decided on the ultimate um, mission statement. But that is it today. Empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. Now, that mission statement is now embedded in everyone. I can happily say that thanks to employee comms, um, that mission statement is very, very much evident in everyone's thinking. This is a very powerful statement because it talks about so many things. It's how we're making a difference and how we're empowering our customers, and more importantly, how we as employees of Microsoft are delivering that. So that landed really well with the employees. Um, we also came up with um, a set of ambitions that we wanted that was again crafted with oversight from Satya, the senior leadership team, which comprises a number of people, and then filtered down um, to divisions and then to subsidiaries. India is considered a subsidiary. So there were people who were here who had inputs into how we came up with this um, uh, matrix, if you like. Three focus areas. We want to reinvent productivity. So we were a boring company, not sexy. We wanted to change that image both internally and externally. So we wanted to talk about how we were reinventing productivity and building products and services for that. We talked about wanting to create more personal computing for consumers. So on mobile, on PC, on any device, you know, we were, we were creating products and services for people externally. But the employees were being empowered to do that. And the third piece was using the cloud. The cloud is a key plank for all of us. So a lot of messaging went around on that. And so these are the bold ambitions that we talked about. But it's not enough to just have ambitions and talk about what we want to do in our mission statement. We actually had to do a lot of work with employees to figure out what we want to say to them and how we want them to think about what they do at Microsoft and what their contributions are. So here we talk, so Satya's one of Satya's big quotes is, you know, it's not enough to talk about, you know, uh, uh, knowing it all, but it's more important to learn it all. So the focus here for us is learning all the time. Every, every message, every poster, every digital signage, every uh, email has a focus on key messaging around learning and what we did when we planned the whole sort of announcement, we said, these are the things we did in the background. We, we had employee focus groups, we went out externally, we talked to other leadership team members, so Satya actually consulted with a number of people talked about what we, were what we were aspiring to do. And finally, we came up with this, growth mindset. Now, growth mindset is a terminology that we use in our company a lot. It's used, as I said, in every, pretty much every piece of communication in some shape or form throughout uh, every channel. I'm not saying that every email has growth mindset in it, but it's kind of when we first launched the program on culture, we made it a point to have every digital platform, every um, physical platform and channel captured growth mindset. And what is growth mindset? Growth mindset is about encouraging employees to think about learning. And if they fail at some project, it doesn't matter. You keep pick yourself up and you move on and you come up with um, a solution. And it's OK to fail. The other pieces that we talked about is that as a company, we wanted our employees to be customer obsessed. That means look after our customers. We wanted them to be more inclusive. Big focus on inclusion in our company. Um, equal opportunity, of course, it exists. But this is about inclusion of every kind, being respectful, being thoughtful, being inclusive of your peer group. So this is a strong messaging that we did. 
And of course, we wanted to build a, 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 a uniform, like I spoke earlier on about um, how we have this very large, disparate group of people all across the globe. So we wanted to bring some messaging around that. And finally, making a difference. Employees feel very happy when they know their company is doing stuff that is good for other people. So CSR was a big plank for us as well. And we made sure we told our employees. So some of the things we introduced, we created a hackathon, uh, which is an internal hackathon. I can't give you all the details, but let's just say it was a huge success. Uh, three days uh, every year are devoted to an innovation where we have employees come together. They do stuff that is outside of their workplace. So they don't actually concentrate on their day job, and their managers are encouraged to let them spend time on this. It's 48 hours of hacking. Um, and it's not just technology. It is people like marketing specialists. You know, we've come up, we've, I've sat and hacked on a, on a team where I wanted to sort of maybe create a better platform for communication or create an app for communication or, you know, those sorts of things. So the one week hackathon was a huge success. It brings the employees together and a lot of messaging that went around it. And I'll speak to all those platforms and channels in a minute. Microsoft Give, as I explained, CSR program. We've always had CSR, but we've ramped it up big time. And there is, there is literature to support that employees are really, really happy. I mean, I won't go into the metrics, but employees really enjoy working for an organization that's doing good work externally. So, and I don't mean um, financially, I mean you know, contributing to society in a meaningful way. And of course, having Satya stand in front of Linux, um, this is a very important photo caption because it speaks to how we agreed to talk about how we were partnering with Linux, which is something we hadn't done before, which demonstrated sort of visually that we are open to open source, we're open to partnerships with organizations that we hadn't been before, and that we're open to making new inroads into the technology community, which we hadn't done before. Okay. So how did we get the culture infused into um, people? So this is a little bit of an expensive exercise, so it's not something that I know that you could possibly even consider taking away. But wherever possible, messaging to the employees, here, this landed really well, because people, we had, photo, this is graphic illustrations, but we had photographs of people that were on their coffee cups, or photographs of people on a little dangler that, um, you know, talked about some aspect of culture we wanted to encourage them to think about. This is all the culture stuff I'm talking about. This is not what we do on our daily job. This is like concerted two hours of messaging uh, on different channels and platforms to get um, people to uh, understand what we were trying to do. So I'll just, here we go. Some new initiatives that we introduced so people had a chance to think differently and give them, bring them different perspectives. Um, outside In. Outside In is a very successful initiative for employees. It's a speaker series. Uh, everyone does speaker series, I know. Here what we do is we try and work with publishing houses who have literature circuits and literary circuits. And they have, you know, there's usually a rhythm around when, when people, speakers come in and writers come in. Um, and don't pay them. We don't pay. It's all done gratis. And political, um, polit political organizations as well. We don't do it here in India. We don't do the political organizations because of you know, the various sensitivities. But we do encourage writers to come in, artists, different people to come and talk about their perspectives. And it's been a very successful program for us. MSW is Microsoft Web. It's a portal that we use. That is the most consistent information portal that we've created for all employees everywhere. It goes out every Friday. Um, each subsidiary has its own. Um, portal as well, like a locally relevant one, which has locally relevant information that might benefit. So I have worked on the same, this MSW piece. So if we have three top stories, which are all the stories we're talking about in the company, and then four bottom stories, which are all the stories that are happening in our region. So if it's Spain, they'll do Spain related stuff. And in our case, of course, it's stuff that's happening around the world. Separately, Satya, he's very engaged. So uh, we have him speaking to the employees every month. We also do recordings of him addressing, uh, just speaking to the camera, of course it's um, with a teleprompter, um, about certain things that he feels very important about. And those get podcast every month as well. So there's two channels we use. One is a regular, and he stands, he just goes up and he presents himself. There would typically be around maybe 500, 600 employees that sit there. And he says, ask me any question. So it's, I'm not sure how it would work 
in NTPC, but there is absolutely no constraint on what he says. He's very transparent and he speaks and if he cannot answer a question, he'll say, I cannot answer that question because it's sensitive or blah, 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 whatever. But it's very important channel for us and we found it's resonated really well and made the employees very happy and feel very connected with the company and feel like Satya is really invested in each one of us. So that's it's some two-way two way. So, uh, so Satya is here, he's standing on a little, he doesn't even stand on a stage and employees are all around him and they just he, shoot questions. Satya, why is the cafeteria food so bad? Satya, why does, um, why can't we have X benefit or I'm in, on maternity leave but I didn't get, it, literally it comes down to those sorts of questions and uh, he takes them once a month, once a month. And then the other thing we do is we have these learning videos that I just mentioned which is basically we just take what they call snacks. It's not like full Ram Kahani because that doesn't work. No one has time to sit and watch a whole long video. So it might just be Satya on, um, I don't know, uh, it could be uh, the launch of Windows Creator, Fall Creator. But in your case, it could be some initiative or something, but it's only like a 30 second, 40 second thing that you embed into an email and you send. So, so people actually have time to consume it because everyone, we all face the same challenge attention span. In Australia, they call it when someone doesn't pay attention, they say, oh, he has the attention span of a minty, which basically means that's the duration that it takes to chew a chocolate, right? So, so that's the challenge. We face the same issues and we're always trying to figure out new ways of keeping people attend, keeping their attention and capturing them in different channels. So I'm going to speak to some of that as well in a minute. Okay, so culture starts at the, at the top, yes. Leaders have to inhale and be committed to what they want to change, but it also has to be from the bottom up, you know, it comes the other way as well. Only Satya or the top team no, this is the top team. They all talk the same, they all walk the talk, they all speak the same language. We have a very uniform messaging uh, which is created, there are templates, there are presentations, everything, the Microsoft story for employees remains consistent. You don't recreate decks and give stuff. They might tweak it a little bit for their purposes, but there is one consistent Microsoft story, so, so, so that there is no, you know, no sort of con confusion in people's <coughs> minds about what we want to say about ourselves to our employees. So all these people are senior, the senior there is SLT, his senior leadership team. What is the word? Yeah. How do they take it? So they respond. I mean, there is. So we have channels. Uh, um, we have something called the CEO platform, which is Satya's stream, and we have the uh, uh, company platform, which is Yama, which is a tool that. Have you guys heard of Yama? Okay. Yeah. So Yama is used. We have different uh, Yama groups. We have a company group, and we've had situations where SLT responds on those Yama groups. We've had our head of HR, for example, the lady. Um, second level with the glasses on the, sec on the right, um, Kathy, she has initiated lots of announcements using Yammer and there have been complaints. Why is this not happening? You know, this benefit has been taken away. So she comes online and she responds to them. She doesn't respond to everything, of course. Uh, it's, there's a certain level of filtering that happens. Uh, but I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a debate recently about the employee card badge and so People were saying it's very stodgy. This was around the same time frame that Satya started. It's very stodgy. We need a new card. I mean, it seems like a silly thing, right? Why do you want to worry about an employee card? But to people, it really mattered. And there was this long string that happened at the company uh, that went on, like hundreds and hundreds of comments. And so one designer jumped up and said, I'm going to uh, create a new design. Is, are people interested? So that again conversation happened on Yammer. And Kathy, uh, to her credit, jumped in and said, you know, share with me what you come up with. Um, I think it took about six months with iterations and everything. We have new, a new card. And of course, that in itself generated some very good employee satisfaction because it felt like being listened to, also being practices that are suggested are being adopted so that there's not like resistance to everything. And it's a very open company in that respect, yeah. So, um, I just want to quickly talk about how we measure change that doesn't render here properly. So after we introduced the culture community, we had a lot of, if you see the graphs, uh, 
and we did some other focus groups, etc. The, the numbers just went up. It showed us that you know people were thinking about diversity inclusion more. That there was a recognition that the leadership was speak, walking the talk. Again, there's some figures here. It started in November 15th, and how how we went through and where we are now. So that that sort of is some of the metrics. I've not shared all of them. I was talking to you about the Q and A, right? One of the things we do in the Q&A is we also do real-time pulse. Are you guys familiar with the pulse tool? So real-time pulse is a, techno is a tool which you use. So I'm talking, I'm saying something, you don't like what I'm saying, you respond on a tool and it gets immediately captured. That at this point, something that Satya said that didn't land well. At this point, he said something, it did land well. And at the end, you also get, um, uh, you know, we send out a survey and people say, you know, this presentation was, you sort of do the numbers and you come up with the metrics. But this has been a very important tool for us to understand what conversations people like and what conversations people want more of and what are not landing well and what we need to work harder on to improve. So there's always this ongoing sort of assessment around employee sentiment, both at a global level, at corporate, as well as on our own all hands that we have. In India, we have... Um, uh, head of our uh, uh, Microsoft India um, subsidiary is a gentleman called Anant Maheshwari. So Anant does two town halls a year. We, we, we track everything that is said while he's talking. And then we go back and we review and we say, okay, now this thing didn't now. And we follow up the following town hall on things that he had to address in the previous town hall. So there's always follow up. Uh, similarly, at a lo even lower divisional level, we do the same thing. All our all hands are tracked. And So it's anonymous, typically it's anonymous, because that gives the employees the com comfort to be able to be transparent and, as opposed to curtailing and curbing their commentary. Right. So, I mean, it's just a perception. People speak out when they know that they're not going to be identified. So this is just a quick thing about what we did with the culture. I won't speak to all of them, but the main thing is number seven, communicate, communicate, communicate. I don't need to tell you all that because you know your communication specialists yourself. So for us as communicators, this is what we've been doing for the last three years in the culture shift. And I'm happy to say that today we can really confidently say that the, co the company has shifted in its product output. The company has shifted in how employees feel. Attrition levels have dropped. We've also had a situation where our share prices have gone up really well, you know, there's a, there's, a big, there's a big jump in our share price as well. Okay, now, this didn't render properly, guys, so I'm just going to tell you very quickly. I'm sorry, I apologize for the font type here. I shouldn't have put this slide in. Uh, six businesses in, Hyder in, in India. Uh, I'm with India Development Center, but the others are Microsoft Research, um, GTSE, which is technical support. Uh, we have, of course, sales and marketing based in Delhi. And we have Microsoft Services, which is enterprise. Our, our people go out and help enterprise to roll out Microsoft products and services. 8,000 plus employees, nothing like you guys, 22,000. I was so impressed to hear that you actually have such a large employee base. Um, but we have one, uh, one newsletter which goes out. And we have uh, several standard um, channels that we use. And I'll speak to that in a second. Um, all the other information I won't speak to, I think you can figure that out. Um, our goal, same thing, cultural transformation and wanting people to be feeling engaged and wanting people to feel that we are employer of choice. And that we do through, a micro, uh, through the employer of choice. Um, we regularly submit uh, to the, do you guys do that? Employer of choice? Yeah. Okay. First step, aligning, I won't even bother with this, aligning your communication strategy, understanding your employees. We have the same issues here. We have Again, with six businesses in India, um, each, I think apart from the technical groups, like all the people who are working in R&D and building products, they are geeks. They come from IITs and NITs. So they're a very different mindset to the marketing folks. And then we go to the research folks who are even deeper academics. Um, so um, disparate communities, so each uh, business has a comms lead. Um, and, but we all come together as a team. We meet every Monday morning and we discuss one hour. It's like it's, it's a form of agile, what we call agile communications. So people just go, what's top of mind for you? Tuck, 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 around the table. And 
exchange any sort of new things that are coming up and when we come together for, 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 for India-wide activities. So um, these are the kind of mix of employees that we have. I've already mentioned this, so I'm going to switch on this. These are the, for us, these are the main things that we're focusing on here in India as well, all aligned to the corporate mission, of course. And I've mentioned, spoken to you about our people and people and culture. Innovation is a big one here. People feel very proud in, our, in India, certainly, when we're talking about innovation. They feel, you know, so we do a lot of messaging around uh, products that have been uh, built by teams. So there's a lot of team recognition. So when someone does something, I'm sure in your newsletters it must be the same thing, right? You say someone has landed something. So we do the same thing. Mm, we also try and encourage employees to write about their experience of building a product and stuff. We also try and encourage employees to uh, recognize other employees who are doing something. We use a tool called Kudos, uh, which is like if I feel that you have done something good, I can go to this tool and I'll send in a message saying thank you very much for doing X, Y, Z and you know, great job and it'll go straight to the manager. So it builds employee pride in them. So we, ha we use a lot of tech tools uh, in terms of recognition. Um, how do we measure our impact? These are the things that we use in India. So I'll explain polite mail. Does anyone know about polite mail? Okay, polite mail is a tool. Uh, it's an external tool which uh, we use now regularly. It's very clever. Uh, you send an email out. Uh, you have a polite on your machine as a as a license. It's a licensed tool. It's very cheap. And then you see how many people open it, how many people read it, how long they took to read it. So so you also have like a like a how can I say? So 20 seconds tells you that they scanned the email. 40 seconds tell you that they read some of it. That's the, you know, so you figure out like, and of course if it's longer then you know they actually read the whole email. And then you see the click rate and you see also how they've interacted, the, if, it, if, there's a, if the email has a link in it, where, who hit the link as well. So it's very cheap. If you, if you ever decide you want to use polite mail because you want to know, because quite often I find I, send, I used to send emails out and I never know who's reading them. So this, was a, this is a really clever tool that we use. Um, I mentioned the Microsoft Pulse tool. We do an annual comm survey. Do you guys do an annual comm survey? Yeah? Yeah, and that, and that helps you create your next year's strategy. Right. Uh, focus groups, big, big thing for us in our company. We do a lot of focus groups where we take inputs from people. Do you do that? Do you have employee focus groups? No? Is there a reason for that? No? So, we find it a very effective way of measuring how employees are feeling about things and how things are going. Um, and it could be around HR, it could be around technology, it could be around the company direction, it could be around any of those things. But we use them all the time. We even use employees for helping us with brand. Satisfaction is different. I'm talking about getting, sitting in a room with say 20 people and saying, okay, how you do. So you do focus group. Right. 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 So you Yeah, so the employee resource group. So we do a lot of that with women and different employees. Does it get implemented? Yes. yes. That's great. That's great. Yeah. What did you call it? More? Professional circles. Yeah, we have something similar where we do employee recognition. What is it called? Business minds. Business minds. And what does that do? Mm -hmm. So it's a bit like the hackathon I mentioned, right? So if someone, so you have a problem statement, you ask people to work yes. on figuring it out, right? But is it done in a group of? Right. 
do they select or they self select no. yeah. right right and they're rewarded by what what is the what's in it for them okay Good. that's fine right So you feel these things, that, so there's a good engagement in this, these, these initiatives? No. So we, I found, yeah, is that a, a, more appreciated by the millennials? Or is it by everyone? No, I'm saying, I know, but is it participation is mainly by, across all age groups? We find it only in the millennial groups. Um, we've tried quizzes and... Um, they land only very well with younger employees. They're sort of more geeky, I don't know, it's just the culture maybe. Uh, that's great, so you're a quizzer, are you? Quiz master. Oh really? Now I know who to reach out to for the next one that we want to do. <laughs> right, sorry, you were saying? <laughs> Bully, what were you saying? So, yes. Right. Oh, that's nice. So, the different type names for the different programs. So it's just on your thing, on the quizzing, what we do, um, we have an annual event which the HR team leads. It's called Microsoft, Microsoft Bring Your Children to Work Day, which basically means that you encourage the employee or employees, sometimes because we have husbands and wives working at Microsoft, to bring in their children and we create a program where they get to see what it's like as a day in the life of Microsoft. So from a video conference, to sitting with a developer, to seeing how the tech, what, what is a string when you talk about a string or, and then they get mentored by, you know, people volunteer, employees volunteer to mentor pe other people's kids. So they take them in for their, uh, take them in and sit with them during meetings. Uh, and it's a very successful program. Um, and we've also, we also do a lot of programs around women uh, where we invite, uh, uh, you know, women from outside to come and speak. We invite professional leader, leaders to come in and talk about some of the startups that they're working on, sort of expose uh, a lot of thinking to encourage women entrepreneurs as well as generally entrepreneurship in the company. So um, we do things like that, but that's from an HR perspective and really well engaged uh, programs. They land really well. So the communications part is that we support the team that does it. We do a lot of HR communications as well. Okay, so f I, I think I'll go uh, move on to this. Guys, this is really bad of me. I've put some of the channels and platforms, but you won't be able to read it. So I'll read it out to you. So our main form of communication and channels, uh, platforms are, of course, exec communications. They're, ma they're mails that go out from Anand uh, fairly uh, every month, and in which he talks about leadership strategy. It could be announcements, etc. This is a monthly cadence that happens. Then we have our key information tool, which I've mentioned before, which is Microsoft Web, which captures the global storytelling and then also does the internal storytelling. And here we found it to be a very successful form of building employee recognition as well. Uh, digital signage. Do you also use a lot of digital signage in your workplace? Yeah. So we change our digital signage virtually every day. Um, it's updated. We have a tool uh, which we use called Scala. Uh, but there's also another tool that uh, we're currently looking at using, replacing it because it makes it more agile. You can change content very, very quickly uh, as something happens overnight. Sometimes we have, in, our, in, in my case, I might have something that needs to go up like tomorrow because the product's launched and suddenly they've woken up, they haven't said anything about it. So I'll give you an instance. We recently shipped a product from the company uh, called SMS um, for Skype. Now basically it means that you can use Skype and you have an SMS feature. So I uh, was informed of it like the night before and I was able to just go into the system, tweak it on Scala, and put the signage up so all employees knew when they walked in that you know this was a new product that was that was being shipped and that they could use it and especially had to do it before Diwali that was the other thing we wanted to have this announcement made before Diwali so people could use the product because of the whole SMS and Diwali messages um, 
Yammer is a very important tool for us. We found that it tends to be adopted mainly by smaller groups. People don't like public groups. So uh, like I mentioned, the CEO Yammer post, those are the only ones that are big, wide, open groups. Otherwise, people just use small things, uh, small groups. Um, SharePoint and Office Teams, have you started looking at all at Office? Do you, what sort of, how do you collaborate as a group? Like, how do you change documents and fix things and stuff? So if you have a, uh, you, you know, you're writing something like an email and you want someone else's opinion about something you're working on because it involves their group as well, do you use a, a platform where you're able to go online and they, you can in real time change things? So we use SharePoint a lot for that. You can do that with SharePoint. Um, are you, you, I think Albert mentioned that we use SharePoint here at NTPC. Albert, did you say you use SharePoint? No? OK. So this is a plug for my company's product, SharePoint. <laughs> Please do look at it if you have, because they also have a feature in it called Office Teams. And Office Teams is great. So I will be sitting like I'm in the middle of working on a very imminent event that's happening next Monday. It's a big event. It will be unveiled to all of you soon. And there's a group of eight of us working on it. We use this thing called Office Teams. There must be other tools that are available. But it's a fabulous way of you upload a deck or you upload a briefing document or you upload a messaging document you want or set of talk points for your leader who's going to speak at a public engagement. You just upload it onto this little group. And only that group can see it. And you can put up pictures, and you can put up all sorts of things, and you just pull them down as and when you want to use a creative asset. Right? Um, we use events, a lot of events. We do a lot of events at Microsoft, employee events. I mentioned just bring your child to work day, but we do a um, ton of events that are focused mainly on technology. Week after next, I'm doing an event called IDC Tech Fest, where we're going to encourage each group to bring in their best innovation and we give them a little booth, we give them a little screen or they bring their desktop, whichever they prefer. And we are going to have about 35 booths set up and we're going to have people walking in and out. We're providing food, coffee, you know, everything for about four hours. And the idea behind that is to encourage each team and there's no winning or no competition or anything. So we're not saying best innovation, etc. It's just for the groups to be able to share what they're doing um, and typically no group knows what the other group is doing because there's so much happening at any given time. So the group that's working on bot technology and landing something that's, uh, you know, that's really key piece of technology that some other group can use, this is where they have a forum where they exchange views. And we also create a scenario where you can have a little networking space. So I can come up and come up to you and say, come, let's sit and talk and let's figure out how we can collaborate on this. So we do that a lot. Um, and we do it with the largest employee presences, which is Hyderabad campus. Right? So I don't know, do you have something like this where people talk about maybe through the engineering? I know it's a different type of work, but as an exchange of you know, ideas and stuff, a forum for that? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But in a, in a way where you make it an event versus a meeting. So we find that employees love to sort of stand there and talk about what they're doing and have people come up and engage with them. Yeah. Um, now this is this one at the bottom is a new thing that I'm using a lot of. It's called Kezala. Has anyone heard of Kezala? It's an Android tool. Microsoft Kezala, but and I'm not not this is not a plug for it. This is more about play with it and see what you think. If you have any. Um, we use it a lot because, you know, like if I, like Albert and I would be on Kaizala, it's a group. It's like a hub and spoke model. I'm the admin and all of you are receiving the information and I will send you a quick survey, uh, one question, or I want, you, I want you to do something, or I want to have a meeting uh, so I can send a calendar invite. I can do all sorts of things. The government of Andhra Pradesh used this recently. Mm, for a Pushakaram fair called Krishna Pushakaram. I'm not sure if any of you are familiar with Krishna Pushkaram. Yeah, so it's like millions of devotees that descend upon this area. And uh, uh, Chandra Babu Naidu decided that he wanted to test Kezala uh, as a tool with, to work with all his support team. And the support team was some 200 plus people taking care of different ghats along the way. 
and they had food, they had all sorts of things to take care of, security, logistics, managing the people, etc. So they used Kezala. And uh, the feedback, as far as I can, you know, if you read the, if you read the um, um, update from, you know, press releases and from whatever is in the media, did really well, so much so that Chandra Babu Naidu has now turned it into his real-time governance tool. He uses it for everything. Um, and again, it's, if you have other tools like that, I'm not suggesting it has to be Kezala, but an application that you can use, that you can work with. And I, I think Albert mentioned you just built a, an app, right? That, yeah. so, can you tell me a little bit about what that app will do? Hello. Sir, a boli. Ha boli. It's basically internal communication app. Ji. Uh, just now we showed it to Kumar also. And we can show it to yeah. as well as the yes. Uh, basically, all our uh, locations are embedded in this. Uh, and uh, on real time, we can talk. There is a, what you are talking about, Kaisala or WhatsApp, basically. There is a community which we can develop over there. Uh, then we can, we have also integrated many things like on that. Like our, uh, Facebook page and your YouTube page or uh, Twitter page, then our Zimbra mail, that is our internal mail. That's your internal mail, yeah. right. And then our uh, SAP uh, integration. SAP integration. Right. GSS basically. Yeah. Which is which we want to take in. All those things are embedded here quite wonderful. Okay. So it's, it's, it's already being used? You're all using yeah, it? Yeah. We, we, we have just now launched it in the last week. Okay. So and will the leaders use it? Huh? Will the leadership also use yes, it? Yes. Okay, so they're Everybody. all going to use it. Right, right. Everybody has to take it. Even retired employees and family members. Oh, so it's external as well? Uh, to some extent. Mm -hmm. See, all these services can't be accessed by the family members or uh, uh, retired employees like uh, your uh, Zimra mail yes. or GSS. Uh, I see. But other things they can see because we have done away with yeah. Including e yeah, we've done away the same. No, we haven't read. E when you say e magazine, do you mean like a PDF? Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. So we don't, yeah, we don't, we don't do. Yeah. We, we have focus very much on digital. Uh, paper is completely out. And uh, that is, uh, this is from last year now. Yeah. Paper is out. E magazine is in, which is again going to be out from Kolkata. Right. That's great. Excellent. So that app's going to replace all of that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Cool. Like just now, uh, Mr. Rakhubar Das, Chief Minister of uh, Jharkhand, inaugurated our exhibition mm -hmm. that came on the app. Right. That happened one hour before. Oh, that is, that what, is, that, is that what you were talking about? Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, it has to be handled. Right. Now it will be handled. Yes. Now, so it's that fast we can do that. Yes. One of the things I've uh, found that we're spending a lot of time on is uh, when we, of course, we're also digital, but less content and more visual. I don't know exactly. if that's, yeah? yeah, because we find that the picture speaks a thousand words compared yes. to, yeah. But it should not be also telegraphic language. By that you mean too short? Too short. It should be at least two lines so that one can know what is happening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, but we're investing now more and more in photography. We always have, but we try and capture like if every event, everything that we do, any any collateral that we create, any email communication, it always has an image, and that image speaks to whatever it is that we want to convey. Obviously, yeah. That goes hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, are you stock no, no, it's our employees. It's um, also culturally relevant. We will not use a image of someone who may be, you know, a white Anglo-Saxon for, uh, for India. And similarly, the Italian sub would not do the same thing. So you know what I mean? It's a, we, yeah. Yeah. Keep it, keep, we keep it very culturally relevant. And the needs of communication for India are very different. And even the mode of business is very different, very different. to how it is, say, in the U.S. And uh, that's also something we train our execs with when they come. You know, when they hold, I mean, of course, it's not very hard to explain that to them because they already get it. I mean, if we're talking about being inclusive in the company, then of course it's something that is like, 
<laughs> something that has to be inhaled by them from the very word go. So um, I will now just talk about some of the things we do as a group. Um, I have mentioned that we get together every, every uh, Monday, but this is an employee comms summary mail that gets sent out. One person is responsible for sending out a summary of whatever is happening around the company. Key moments, key highlights, so big events, where our SLT is speaking, who is talking, um, um, links to you know, various websites that talk about the event. Then next three ne this week we are going to be covering X, Y, Z. Uh, from, for newsletter, for this, for that. So it's like an all-up mail that we use and then we temper it for our own purposes. So there is one person who is kind of the owner of that activity and, and we all have to give him inputs from time to time about what we're doing. So India is doing, Spain is doing. So that way we kind of know. Do you do something s similar? No, but do you convey one document every Monday or every fortnight or whatever? Because that's a really good way of everyone knowing who's doing what and you actually can leverage some of that stuff for your own assets, for whatever you're doing, any communication that you're doing. Um, we have, uh, uh, I mentioned, uh, uh, we do what you're doing, Com Summit, we get together uh, every year. In some cases, some people get together every six months. Um, and then, pardon? Yeah. Um, we do a lot of best practice sharing uh, on the site. We have this uh, internal site. So whenever something goes really well, whenever any employee communications campaign goes really well, we have a site where we go and put that in so that people can actually see um, you know, and, and learn that idea. It could be even an event. So for example, I'll put the IDC Tech Fest in and tell them what we did and how we did it. So someone in some other part of the company will come ping me and say, hey, how did you do that? I want to do it and I'll send them to that and say, okay, again, just this is how to do how to do and what to do and here are the assets we created. So we do a lot of best practice sharing. Um, and uh, I think the others are pretty straight, straight, you know, straightforward. Any questions on this? This one I'm not asking you to read what this is, but I, I don't know how often I mean, I can't stress enough what we haven't been doing enough of but are doing a lot of is sharing what we're doing, tell, talking about externally, internally. Like you said, we, every, every email, every newsletter rather, I put links to all the big stories that we've had being spoken about outside of, in, outside of the office, outside of the you know, organization, so that employees feel very proud about stories that are coming, including the bad ones. We don't censor them. So we don't just sort of select. There's a filtration process, of course, on what we want to put out. But we will make sure that if there is some negative press, we'll put that in as well, so people know. Right? Um, and this is an example of what we did last year when we launched our own version of MSW India. I, it's pretty self-explanatory what we wanted to do. We wanted to excite the employees. We wanted to have them engaged on Yama with a Yama contest. And after which we, we did a poll where we asked them how they felt about the whole MSW India piece. So first email I went out from someone I know looks very colorful and very sort of uh, non-Microsoft. It was intentional because we wanted to in, get them excited about sharing their ideas on what India loves. And it was done on Yammer because we were facing an issue with India wide. Hardly anyone was using Yammer. There were small groups. So we said, let's do this, this campaign called What India Loves and get people on Gamma. Plus, we'll also launch this new MSW piece. Um, and we got Anand to send this out. Initially, he wasn't sort of like, he was like, wow, how can I send this email out? But he did. And so that started the, um, the um, announcement on Yama. And it was the most successful Yama engagement we've ever had because people went from Pani Puri to uh, you know, all the things that they really liked, they really felt engaged. It wasn't about products, it wasn't about technology, it was about how they felt about India and their, you know, how they felt about India. So uh, this is really what we did with that digital display. Uh, we put these slides up um, and got a lot of feedback on, hey, how come we're doing this so differently? This is, this is sort of shaking it up a little bit. You know, even we face the same issue that there's the same rhythm of business, the same communication. We try and do some new things. 70% of our strategy is to stick with what we're doing, 20% is to build on something and 10% is to take risks and make something new. And every year we introduce some new thinking. So this, was, this shook people up a lot and they really liked it. And now of course we're doing, we're, we're, we're 
we are doing other things, not the same theme, not the same design theme, but we are doing other interesting things. So people kind of like sit up and take notice rather than, okay, same old, same old, you know. That is very important to keep people feeling, you know, like a little bit surprise element. And we put a little installation up the front and people started taking selfies, posing next to the truck, posting it up. We have a hashtag at Microsoft which we encourage our employees to use called hash, 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 my, hashtag Microsoft Life. So people were posing, taking selfies with the truck. And it was a very nice, it happened intuitively, we didn't have to encourage anything. We do a lot of this with a lot of standees and installations. We're doing one installation right now for Satya's book. I don't know if you guys have, any of you have bought it, read it, whatever. But you must know about it. It's called Hit Refresh. And we're going to have an installation in our campus next week, which is going to be um, three panels, because it's being published in three editions in three different languages. And we're going to have someone called a visual harvester, which is a guy who captures the event as it unfolds visually, create it. And we're going to encourage employees to come up and write what they, what is their hit refresh moment. And there's going to be prizes and stuff. So uh, we use installations a lot. And then those photos, then they become photos for external um, uh, media as well. So they get used like that. So that's what we did with what India loves. And of course, Yammer contest, I explained, we had something like 250 Yammer posts on this. Uh, it was very successful. So I'm going to end here and I'm going to ask you if you have questions for me. I, as I explained at the beginning, culture was a very important po component for us. Uh, we've been focusing a lot on culture. So I don't know if this is something that is an issue that you have to deal with. I know you have a lot of employees. The 22,000 employee base is much larger than what we are doing. But uh, if there's something I can help answer your questions, please let me know. I'm happy to take questions. Yes. I can't, I can't talk to you about that. <laughs> Seriously, you want me to tell you what my Microsoft communications budget is? It's large. It's large. And it's for different subsidiaries, is different needs. Um, but the focus is on bringing, I mean, like, with less, do more is the mantra for us. Yeah? Everyone has that, right? With less, do more. Mantra remains the same, but kaam zyada karo. Do I have what? Yes, I haven't spoken about the PR here, but we have a very, very so solid PR machinery, which is very focused on our external engagement with the community, with businesses, with, we work with partners, so ISVs who come and partner with us. We have customers we engage with. We're doing an innovation showcase. You know. Yeah. So I do, I, yes, we do, of course. But uh, uh, did you have a specific question around that? No, just I wanted to uh, the timeline when you announced this sector. Every, every, week, week, you have every week we're doing something. Yes. In a sense, the individually with people. So for enterprise, we have someone who manages enterprise. For customers, for consumers, we have someone who manages consumer. For philanthropies, we have someone who manages. For corporate, we have someone who manages. And then, of course, uh, there are events happening all over. We do road shows, we, we do things where we invite customers and they talk. We have analyst days. We speak to influencers. We work with bloggers a lot, right? Uh, and in the blogging community as well, there's a lot of tech-focused tech blogging for us. That's our area. Um, uh, when we bloggers Yes. No, no, no. We don't screen. So if we invite a set of bloggers, so like we did a, so I'll give you an example. When we launched